Hi everyone. I hope you are all doing well and feeling good today. It's great to have you back on my channel, and I'm excited to share something truly incredible with you today that will change the way you think about our past and the technologies that existed within it. After hours of research and exploration across various sources, I've uncovered some truly mind-blowing revelations that will challenge everything you thought you knew about history. And be sure to check out the description box for more fascinating topics that you won't want to miss. Now, I'll admit that my video quality may not be top-notch, but I can guarantee that the content is worth it. Some may call it revisiting old ideas, but I believe it's important to question the narratives that have been fed to us and explore all possibilities. If you want to stay in the loop on exclusive updates, be sure to join my Telegram channel, and don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case anything unexpected happens. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. I must warn you that what I am about to share may be difficult to believe and there is limited evidence to support it. However, I hope you will keep an open mind and be willing to explore new evidence that could potentially corroborate this theory. A few months ago, I touched on this topic briefly on this channel, but now I would like to delve deeper into it. Before we do that, let me remind you of some details about Armageddon. As it is written in the book of Revelation, the Armageddon, the great day of God, the Almighty, is the day in which God pours out his just and holy wrath against unrepentant sinners who are led by Satan, in a literal end of the world final confrontation. Armageddon is the symbolic name given to this event, based on references in scripture regarding divine obliteration of God's enemies. If you take a closer look at the aftermath of this catastrophic event, you'll find several images that showcase the sheer destruction that Armageddon caused. Look for yourself and observe the mountains and landscapes. What do you see when you apply the post-millennial worldview to these areas? These natural structures were undoubtedly structures that were made by persons or saints and changed in appearance because of the fervent heat, as mentioned in 2 Peter chapter 3. There is no doubt that Armageddon has had major impact on every single surface of the earth, knowing that this was God's wrath poured out on the wicked. The remnants of this catastrophic event can be seen all over the Grand Canyon and Egypt itself too. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The location itself is part of huge Lichtenberg figures we see all over the world. This type of electrical scarring is the result of high-level electrical discharges. We believe the ruins of this location are the aftermath of some catastrophic event that took place during Armageddon. It looks like many ancient buildings in these areas may have felt the fervent heat that is mentioned in 2 Peter chapter 3. A Lichtenberg figure is a branching electric discharge that sometimes appears on the surface or in the interior of insulating materials. They are named after the German physicist Georg Christoph Lichtenberg, who first discovered and studied these patterns in the late 18th century. Lichtenberg figures are a natural phenomena which exhibit fractal properties and tree-like structures as a result of high-level electrical charges. In a restricted area of the Grand Canyon, there are pyramids, caves, and tunnel cities full of hieroglyphics and ancient Egyptian relics. Many people do not know about them as this information has been suppressed by the federal government for about a century. The sky over this area is restricted airspace, the area surrounding this pyramid and cave on the ground is illegal and treacherous to navigate, and all official reports about this from the Smithsonian and elsewhere have been censored, modified, nullified, or retracted. This still has not stopped people from attempting to visit this part of the canyon. 
Many have been arrested, and some have died attempting to climb to these sacred sites over the years. It has gotten to the point where the government feels it must have armed FBI agents guarding inside the entrance to the cave that is now known as Kincaid's Cave. Kincaid's Cave was named after G.E. Kincaid, who was the first to enter the cave. After retiring from the Marines, G.E. Kincaid worked for S.A. Jordan as an archaeologist. S.A. Jordan was sent to the Grand Canyon by the Smithsonian Institute to investigate information reported by John Wesley Powell. The tunnel is presently on a cliff wall 400 feet above the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon. Archaeologists estimate the man-made cavern is around 3,000 years old. This cavern is over 500 feet long and has several cross tunnels to large chambers. This was the lowest level and last Egyptian tunnel city that was built in the Grand Canyon. Since the time that it was constructed, archaeologists estimate the Colorado River has eroded 300 feet lower. John Wesley Powell discovered what is now called Powell's Cave. The following is a quote taken directly out of a book that Powell published. In this canyon, great numbers of man-made caves are hollowed out. I first walked down a gorge to the left of a cliff and climbed to a bench of the cliff. There was a trail on the cliff bench that was deeply worn into the rock formation. Where the trail crossed some gulches, some steps had been cut. I could see no evidence that the trail had been traveled in a long time. I returned to our camp about 3 p.m., and the men had found more Egyptian hieroglyphics on cliff walls near the cave. We explored the cave and found this shrine and other artifacts. That evening, I sent a team member to notify the Smithsonian Institute of our discovery. We continued to survey the canyon and discovered more Egyptian tunnel cities. I estimate in my report that I think upwards of 50,000 Egyptians had inhabited the Grand Canyon at one time. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it valuable and informative, please show your support by liking and sharing it with your friends and family. Together, we can spread awareness and make a positive impact on the world. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming next. Thank you for sticking around until the end. I hope the information shared here was useful and insightful for you. Until next time.